In this Cricut tutorial, I'm about to show you how to use printable heat transfer vinyl, also known as printable HTV, with your Cricut cutting machine. So let's get crafty. Hey, I'm Michael, and to make this magic happen, we will first off need some printable HTV. Now, to be completely fair, this is not technically a heat transfer vinyl, but it is literally like the closest thing that you can get to it. This stuff is so freaking good. This is an inkjet printable opaque transfer. This is from StarCraft. This is the StarCraft version for dark materials. They also have a version for light materials. I honestly, y'all, I prefer the dark material version. I think it's just so much easier to work with. Plus, you can apply this to any color shirt. It doesn't have to be just on dark t-shirts. You can apply this on white t-shirts, black t-shirts, and anything in between. So we will be using this. We will also need an awesome design to put onto our t-shirts. So let's head over to crafty.net. And what I wanna do right over here is basically just type in here, but let's just put in here patriotic gnomes. Why not? Let's put in here patriotic gnomes. And with crafty.net, as I'm sure most of y'all know, you can get unlimited access, unlimited downloads to everything on the site. So you could literally go in here and download all of these if you want to. Really, you could download anything you want to on the entire site, completely site-wide for literally just $9.99 per month. Unlimited access, unlimited downloads to all of them, all of the SVG files, all of the sublimation files, all the sticker files, all of the fonts, all of the things. So it's just so freaking good. I honestly recommend going for the yearly option. It's 107.89 for the entire year, just cause it saves money and I'm all about saving money. So anyways, I'm gonna go in here and select this one right here. I'm honestly obsessed with this little patriotic gnome couple. I mean, y'all, I know that there's like this little watermark over top, but look at the detail in this. Look at the shading, look at the shadowing, look at all the detail. Like they are freaking gorgeous and I'm here for it. So what we're gonna do is come over here and we don't need the entire zip file, but let me go over and change that over to a PNG file. And with the one click download, there we go, just like that. Now I did download two different files for that PNG because what we have done with this is actually create one that is like a sticker file, like this right here. Like as you can see, you can see like the little white border around all that. But we also have one that is more like a sublimation file or you can even use this for like the print and cut feature like we're using today. So we go ahead and open that up as well. And as you can see, this one does not have that white little border. So this one right here is the one that we will go ahead and upload into Cricut Design Space. So let's hop over to Cricut Design Space. And what we'll need to do is come over here to the bottom left, click on upload, click on upload image, and let's go ahead and drag and drop our file over here and onto the screen. Now I always like to click on complex. So let me go over here and click on complex like so, and then click on continue. We don't need to do anything on this page. We already had the background removed and everything taken care of for you. So let's go ahead and click on apply and continue. And then this is very important. We want to select this as a print then cut image. So select that right there and then click on upload. All right, so here it is now under our recently uploaded images. Let's go ahead and click on that and then click on add to canvas. All right, so it did come in a little bit large and that's because we wanna make sure that this is a high quality file. So because of that, it's obviously gonna come in a little bit larger, but we can shrink this down, still keep all the quality for the file and it's gonna come out looking amazing once we print this out with our inkjet printer. So let's go ahead and just zoom out for right now. And I do wanna point out and Actually, before I even do that, let me go ahead and turn off the grid up here at the top left where these two little rulers meet. I just really like to go ahead and turn that off to have like a nice clean white background just so you can see everything a little bit more clearly. But I mean, it all comes down to what's important to you. But what I wanna point out is with this image, there's not any like little random pieces all floating out to the side, anything like that. This is all, when you think of it, it's all one single solid image. All of the pieces are connected in one way or another, and that's gonna make it perfect for the printable transfers that we're using from StarCraft, this printable transfer for dark materials. Now, technically, you could go in and actually use a file that's something like this right here, but as you can see, there's just all these like little stars that are all kind of floating out here in the middle of nowhere, and what we have to do if we actually cut off something like this is either go in here and use like a heat transfer mask to transfer all of this over to our shirt, but to be completely honest, I'm not a huge fan of using the heat transfer mask. If you don't do it exactly right, it can actually pull up some of the color whenever you remove it from your pressed shirt. Not a huge fan of that. But even with something like this, with all the little bits and bobs, all the little individual letters kind of hanging out here in the middle of nowhere, you could go in there and actually individually place those onto your shirt, but that can be kind of a pain. 
or you could always go into Cricut Design Space and use the offset feature to create like a huge border that kind of encapsulates the entire image. So let me show you what that would be like real quick. So for something like that, we would come up here and click on offset and that's basically creating a border or a shadow behind our image where it can cut out all as one single solid image, but we need to make sure that it covers the entire background. And what I mean by that is, as you can see, once I clicked on the offset feature, we have like this little blue outline around all of our design like so. We could go in here and drag this up like so, just until all of those pieces are kind of interconnected, just like that. Click on apply. And then we can basically kind of flatten all this as one image. We could even change the color of that shadow to white if we wanted to, or really any color we wanted to. And then once those are together, we can just kind of click and drag over both of those and then come down here towards the bottom right and click on flatten. And that's going to turn that into a print and cut image. That would be great for the printable transfers that we're using today because it keeps it all as one single solid image, one single solid layer. But what we're going to do today instead is just go ahead with this image because I think this is just going to be freaking awesome for a shirt. It really gives kind of like a sublimation type of effect, a sublimation kind of look but to a darker colored material, which I'm a huge fan of. Now you would also wanna make sure that you're using an inkjet printer for this. A laser printer is not compatible with this material. Like they explicitly say, do not use a laser printer with this. It's gonna ruin the material. No bueno, no good. You do not wanna go that route. I promise you that. So you will also wanna make sure that you're running a Prince Thin Cut calibration on your printer, which you can do by coming up here towards the top left. And then coming down here, clicking on calibration, and then clicking on print and cut right there and just kind of going through those prompts. All right, so as far as this goes, since we are using this as a print and cut image, the max size that we can use for a print and cut image is 6.75 inches by 9.25 inches at the time of filming this. That could change in the future. I hope, I hope that's the case. I hope that does change in the future to be a larger print and cut size. But as for now, that's what we're kind of constricted to. So let's come up here and for that width, let's put in here 9.25. And let's see if that alone will actually fit within our Princeton Cut parameters. And by the looks of it up here, it is not. So even though the width is within that parameter for the largest measurements, like that 9.25 inches, the height is still over that 6.75 inches. So now let's change the height to 6.75. And that is gonna be more like it, like that right there. So let's go ahead now and come up here towards the top right and click on make it. And as you can see, this is how it's all gonna print out and cut out. Now you will see like this little black rectangle around our image, and that is just the registration marks that our Cricut will then read and to know exactly where to make the cuts on our actual image. It will not be part of your final image, I promise you that. So let's go ahead and click on continue, and then let's click on send to printer. Now I do wanna keep the add bleed option on. So even if you do go through and do a print and cut calibration, it can still be a little off sometimes, just depending. So I always like to turn the bleed on for something like this, where it is gonna be cutting right up against the border of the image. It really just kind of gives us more of a security blanket overall. Let's also go ahead and click on use system dialog, which will allow us to go in here and kind of fine tune our printer settings in to make sure that we get the best quality possible as well. We do wanna go in here and make sure that our printer is selected and I am using the Epson 3760 inkjet printer. And then let's go ahead and make sure the quality is brought over to best. And for the media type, I'm gonna put in here a photo matte paper. Now these options may be different depending upon what printer you're using and what computer you're using, but basically you can go in here for any printer and basically find some very similar settings overall. But let's go ahead and click on print. All right, so I'm not really sure what exactly happened here with my printer but you can see kind of spit some blue ink there just randomly on my paper. Again, not entirely sure what happened, but I think it's gonna be okay. I don't see any that's on the main part of the design. And by the time we cut this out, that'll be kind of excluded anyway. So let's go ahead and put this onto a blue light grip cutting mat, which is important. You don't wanna actually rip this when we're removing it from the cutting mat. And you do wanna position this the exact same way on the mat as it's shown up here on the Cricut Design Space screen. So right up here in the top left hand corner. Now let's go ahead and turn on our Cricut. Now it is important to also say this, that a Cricut Joy will not work for this. A Cricut Joy does not have that Princeton Cut sensor that is needed to do a Princeton Cut image like this. So you will wanna stick with a Cricut Explorer family of devices or a Cricut Maker family of devices. As far as the base material cut settings, you do wanna go in here, click on Browse on Materials, and then type in here, Rice, and click on Rice Paper, and then Done.
So right now it's just reading those registration marks to know exactly where to make those cuts at. I'm also gonna go in here for my easy press or heat press or whatever you're using. I'm gonna go in here and set the temperature to 350 degrees and for 30 seconds. Let's go ahead and unload this and then flip the mat over and then peel that away from our material just so we don't screw anything up so that we don't cause any damage to this. I'm also gonna go in here and just trim out my design. And then let's just go in here and kind of remove all of the negative pieces, basically all the pieces that's not part of our design. All right, so that is all weeded out. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and grab my t-shirt that I'm using for this. I'm just gonna lay it out here onto my little easy press mat. And we're gonna go ahead and just preheat this for just a few seconds. Now, another great thing about the whole printable HTV printable transfer is that you can not just go ahead, whenever it's one solid piece anyway, you can go ahead and just peel it off like so. You don't need that heat transfer mask. And again, I don't prefer using the heat transfer mask anyway. Just be very careful when peeling all of it up. Then you can go in here and then just place it wherever you want it to be on the shirt, like so. I like to put my designs about three finger widths or so below the collar. And then I like to grab a Teflon sheet or even like parchment paper, cover all that up. And then we'll go in here and press it again at the 350 for 30 seconds. And I do like to give it good like medium to firm pressure. Now, as far as care instructions go for something like this, you do want to give it at least 48 to 72 hours after pressing it before you wash it. Whenever you do wash it, I do recommend washing it in cold water without fabric softener and obviously without bleach. And then whenever it comes to drying it, I do recommend hang drying it or putting it into the dryer with very low heat in like a tumble dry. If properly cared for, the printable HTV like this from StarCraft will actually outlast the shirt itself. Now, if you all liked this episode and you also want to learn how to best use your Cricut, then definitely consider stamping that subscribe button and also consider ringing that little bell for all of the notifications because we are putting out new Cricut tips, tricks, and tutorials multiple times every single week. And y'all do not want to miss out on a single Crafty or Cricut Minute. Also, if you liked the episode, consider stamping that like button, dropping a comment down below, and heck, maybe even sharing this with your crafty friends. Thank y'all so much for watching. We love y'all to the freaking moon and back. And until next time, stay crafty.